touch on the some questions about the mergers and the acquisition. We have done some small introduction on the mergers and the acquisition. So I want us now to go through some questions. So the first question we can start with should be November 2019. Question number five, part B. November 2019. Question number five, part B. So we start off with a question. November 2019, question number five, five B. So the question reads that, the question reads that A Limited and B Limited are companies operating in the same line of business. A Limited and the B Limited are companies operating in the same line of business. In the past few years, in the past few years, A Limited has experienced stiff competition from B Limited to an extent that A Limited is now contemplating, is now contemplating acquiring B Limited is now contemplating acquiring B Limited in order to consolidate it is market share. In order to consolidate it is market share. The following financial data is available. The following financial data is available, is available. So it's available. So they gave you for about the two companies. There is A Limited and also B Limited. There is A limited and also B limited. So there is annual sales, net income, ordinary shares outstanding, which are in millions. They gave you earning per share, then also market price per share for that case. But now, apart from that, both companies are in the 30% tax brackets. Both companies are in the 30% tax brackets required Roma letter one maximum exchange ratio. Maximum exchange ratio that A Limited should agree to, assuming that it does not expect the illusion in their post acquisition earning per share. Roma letter two total. Premium, the shareholders of B Limited will agree to receive at the exchange ratio in B, Roma letter one above. Roma letter three is about A Limited post acquisition earning per share. Assuming that the two companies agree on an offer price of 30 shillings. Then finally, Roma letter four. A limited post acquisition earning per share, assuming that for every 100 ordinary shares of B limited, the shareholders are offered to 12% debentures of 500 per value. So we start off with the Roma letter one, how to calculate the maximum exchange ratio that A limited should agree to, assuming that it does not expect the addition in the earning per share. First, we should be able to know how to get the exchange ratio. In our previous class, we discovered that for you to calculate the exchange ratio, the exchange ratio is supposed to be given by offer price, the offer price by the predator, offer price by the predator, then we divide by market price per share of the predator, the market price per share. Of. So the predator is the company acquiring the target. The predator is meant to be the company acquiring the target. But now they are talking about non-diluting exchange ratio. They are mentioning about non-diluting exchange ratio. 
So to compute non-diluting, to calculate non-diluting exchange pressure, it will now be non-diluting offer price. It will now be non-diluting offer price. It will now be non-diluting offer price. Non-diluting offer price. Then we divide by market price per share of the predator. Market price per share of the predator. That's now how we shall calculate that particular non-diluting offer price. So we need to calculate non-diluting offer price. So non-diluting offer price. Non-diluting offer price. Non-diluting offer price. It is supposed to be given by, it is supposed to be given by the price earning ratio. Price earning ratio of the predator. The price earning ratio of the predator before the acquisition, before the acquisition, then we multiply by earning per share of the target, earning per share of the target also before the acquisition penalty. So when you want to compute the non-diluting offer price, we come up with that. So price earning ratio, you have seen it in the notes. It is simply market price per share divided by the earning per share. So to compute our price earning ratio. So market price per share of Cocoa Limited, I want, sorry, L Limited, I want you to check what are we given as the market price per share of L Limited? Because L is the one which is the predator. They have given you 16. So divide by earning per share, which is given us four. Then multiply by earning per share of the target. So B Limited is the target. B Limited is the target. It is earning per share has been given us. So we compute that figure to give us non-diluting offer price. Non-diluting offer price is simply so to get the price earning ratio, it is market price per share divided by the earning per share. So that we now come up with the value for that period. You are getting it here. We are getting 45. So you are getting 45. So you want to get the non diluting exchange ratio. So it is simply non diluting offer price. Now divide by the market price per share of the predator. So now to compute that particular non diluting, non diluting exchange ratio. So now you take this non-diluting offer price divided by the market price per share of the predator. So that will be 45. You divide by 16. You take 45 divided by 16. You should be able to take the 45. Then divide by 16. Get to the point. So it should be 0 0.75 to 1 like that. It should be 0 0.75 is to 1. And I have shown you that fraction using the formula ABC that element. So we get it in terms of the shares. So you remember this formula in your calculator, department here somewhere. Because I want us to get them in the form of the shares. So that's not the decimal points. Ah, just press 0 0.75, then we'll press it here. Sorry? Thank you. 
Somewhere you have written. Yeah. So that's that's what you have done. You have to partner in price and inflation. The simply market price per share divided by the adding per share. So we are using the one for A limited. A limited is the predator. What is the market price per share for A limited? You can see the 60. Check under A limited, whether you can see the market price per share. Then, up on you, kuna earning per share. Yeah, so that's now what should give you the exchange ratio. Then, you need to get the earning per share of the target. So, that target is P limited. What is the earning per share for P limited? Yeah. So, in terms of the shares, we are coming up with us. When he expresses, it should be which figure? Now, when you write 0 0.75, you put there in the quote side. Then you press your sign up and put up. It is the same as. Three is to four, like that. So that we don't have decimal points. We don't want the decimal points. So this one is referring to the predator. This one is the predator. Then this one is the target, like that. That one is meant to be the target. So we can conclude that it implies that it implies that the predator is offering three shares. It implies that the predator is offering three shares in order to acquire four shares of the target. It implies that the predator is giving three shares in order to acquire the four shares of the target in order to acquire the four shares of the target. So that is now what we mean by non-diluting exchange ratio. That is now what is meant to be the non-diluting exchange ratio. So we now go to the Roman letter two. Now go to the Roman letter two. So under the Roman letter two, under the Roman letter two, they were asking you total premium that shareholders of B Limited would agree to receive at that exchange ratio. So still in the notes, I've given you a formula on how to calculate the share premium. I've given you a formula on how to compute the share premium. So share premium is supposed to be given by the share premium, the share premium, the share premium. It is supposed to be given by the offer price. It is supposed to be given by the offer price. Then we minus market price per share of the target market price per share of the target so when we want to calculate the share premium it is simply the offer price we minus market price per share of the target so non diluting offer price we had calculated it was 45 it was then we subtract market price per share of the target. The target is meant to be B limited. So what are we given as the market price per share for B limited? 
they were able to give us 30. So when we subtract, we shall come up with what is supposed to be the share premium, which is going to be how much? 50. But we want the total premium. So total premium, total share premium at the exchange ratio. Total share premium at the exchange ratio. We now take the 15, which we have calculated. Then the shares of the target at the exchange ratio are four. So multiplied by those four shares, now to get the total share premium at the exchange ratio. So to get the total share premium at the exchange ratio, you now pick the 15 multiplied by four. We now take the 15, we multiply by four. So that should be now your Roma letter two. That should be now your Roma letter two, how to compute the share premium, total premium at the, that the shareholders should agree to at that particular exchange ratio. So we now go to the Roman letter three. We can now check the Roman letter three. When it comes to the Roman letter three, they are asking that a limited, a limited post acquisition earning per share, a limited post acquisition earning per share, assuming that the two companies agree on an offer price of. 30. So this one is share for share exchange. It will be the share for share exchange. When it is share for share exchange, when it is share for share exchange, that one is meant to be the share for share exchange. When it comes to the share for share exchange, so that Roma letter three, it is share for share exchange. Share for share exchange. It is meant to be. So how do we get the earning per share of the predator at that portion? So to compute, to calculate acquisition earning per share of the predator. It will be given by the combined earnings. You get the combined, the combined earnings of the predator and the target. Of the predator and the target. Then you will be required to divide by number of the ordinary shares number of the ordinary shares of the predator. Then we add new shares to be issued. New shares, new shares to be issued to acquire the targets. To acquire the target. So when you want to compute what is supposed to be the earning per share of the predator, you simply come up with the combined earnings of the predator and the target. We divide by number of the ordinary shares of the predator, then we add new shares to be issued to acquire the target. So the key item is now how to get the new shares to Issue. So to compute the new shares to be issued, we need to calculate the new exchange ratio. We need to calculate the new exchange ratio, which is simply the offer price, which is simply the offer price divided by market price per share of the predator, divided by market price per share of the predator. So they have given you the new offer price. They have given you the new offer price. You can see the new offer price in Roma letter three. Uh, they have agreed for an offer price of how much? So we take the 30 shillings, divide by market price per share of the price. So predator is still limited. You can see it is market price per share. 
it was given as how much? It was given as 60, isn't it? Yeah. So when you divide it is the same as 0 0.5 is to 1. It's 0 0.5. Yeah, but I said we convert them in terms of the shares. Converting them in terms of the shares, I asked you, you press 0 0.5. Then after that, go to your calculator, there is that side, then press that side to give you in form of the shares. One is two, two. So that will be one is two. two. So the exchange ratio will be one is two. So maybe you can just comment that this implies that this implies that the predator is offering one share. This implies that the predator is offering one share in order to acquire two shares of the target. The predator is offering one share in order to acquire two shares of the target in order to acquire two shares of the target. So from that point, we should now come up with the new shares to be issued. We should now come up with new shares to be issued. We should now come up with the new shares to be issued. So new shares to be issued, we have seen that for every one share, it should be equivalent to two shares of the target. So from this exchange ratio, one share of the predator is equivalent to two shares of the target. So you check the target is B limited. The target is B limited. So when you check under B limited, they have got how many order shares outstanding in limits? You can see it has 3 million ordinary shares outstanding. It has 3 million ordinary shares outstanding. So how many shares will be issued? How many shares needs to be issued? So you simply was multiply. You simply was multiply, whereby it will be 3 million multiplied by 1, divided by 2. Simply be 3 million multiplied by one, then divide by two. So that means they are issuing how many new shares? One point. Yeah. So after that, we now come back to our formula. From there, we should now come back to our formula so that we calculate what is supposed to be our so combined earnings, we simply add the net incomes. Combined earnings, we simply add the net incomes. So in those net income, are you able to see the net income for A limited? It is how much? 40 million. We add the net income of B limited. Net income for B limited is which we have? Nine million. Then we divide by number of the ordinary shares of the predator and the number of the ordinary shares of A limited. A limited has got how many number of ordinary shares? There are 10 millions. Then now we add. 1.5 million shares. Those are the new shares to be issued. So now get the earning per share of the predator. So that should now be able to give you earning per share of the predator. <coughs> the given assets here. Oh, so here they only ask you for the predator. Sometimes they may ask you also to calculate the one for the target. Sometimes they may ask you to also calculate the one for the target. So if you are to compute also for the target, if you are also to compute the one for the target, so to calculate the one for the target, just in case.
adding per share of the target. So if you are to compute the one for the target, you simply take the exchange ratio. You simply take the exchange ratio multiplied by the one of the, the target. share of the so just in case they require you to calculate the one for the target you simply take the exchange ratio multiplied by the one for the predator the one for the predator we have calculated exchange ratio we also calculated remember exchange ratio is one is to two that's the same as one divided by two then multiplied by the four point so anything for the target after the acquisition, you take the exchange ratio multiplied by the one for the predator. You simply take the exchange ratio, you multiply by the one for the predator. So it is giving us which value? 2.13. So that is now, this one was not required that far, but just in case. They want you to calculate the one for the target. So finally, we go to raw monitor form. So we can now check the raw monitor form. So raw monitor form is that a limited post acquisition earning per share. Assuming that for every 100 ordinary shares, for every 100 ordinary shares of B limited, the shareholders are offered two 12 percent debentures options 100 per value. So that raw monitor for is the use of debentures. Now we use the debentures to finance the acquisition. The raw monitor for is the use of debentures in order to acquire the target. Use of the debenture. So Roman letter for it is about use of the debenture. Roman letter for is about use of the debenture. Use of the debenture in order to acquire the target. So when we use the debentures. When we apply the debentures, it is not. Earning per share of the debtor, it will be given by combined earnings. The combined, the combined earnings of the debtor and the target. Then we less the venture interest we minus the venture interest. But we add, we normally add the interest tax benefit. We normally add the interest tax benefit. We normally add interest tax benefit. And once you have done that, you divide by number of the ordinary shares of the predator. Number of the ordinary shares of the predator. So number of the ordinary shares of the predator. So we need to get the number of debentures to be issued. We start by computing number of the debentures. Number of the debentures to be issued. We now come up with number of the debentures to be issued. So to compute number of the debentures to be issued, when you go through the question, they say that 
that assuming that for every 100 ordinary shares of B Limited, shareholders are offered how many? Two debentures. So two debentures are equivalent to, two debentures are equivalent to 100 ordinary shares. Two debentures are equivalent to 100 ordinary shares. So when you check B Limited, which is the target, when you check B Limited, which is the target, it had how many ordinary shares? One or three million. Yeah, so if it had three million ordinary shares, how many debentures were issued in order to acquire that target? When you cross multiply, when you cross multiply, three million by two divided by one hundred. It will be 60,000 debentures. So it will be able to give you 60,000 debentures. So now we compute interest. We calculate interest. So to get interest on the debentures, so there are 60,000 debentures. The bar value of each debenture was given. What are you given as the, as the bar value of the debenture? So multiplied by 500, then you get 12%. The interest rate is 12%. Now you get 12% of that to give us the amount for the interest. So after getting the number of the debentures, each debenture is worth the 500. And the interest rate has been given as 12%. So that should give us how much interest? It gives us 3.6 minutes. It's giving you 3.6 minutes. So now after that, now after that point, now after that point. So we go back to this point. Combined earnings of the brigade and the target. They were basically the net incomes which had been given. The net income was 40 million plus 9 million. The 40 million plus the 9 million. Then now you minus the venture interest, which is 3.6 million. 3.6 million. Then interest tax benefit, you simply take the interest multiplied by the tax rate. Interest tax benefit, you simply take the interest, which is 3.6 million. The corporate tax rate was given to you before required. Both companies are in what percent tax bracket? So multiplied by 0 0.3, then divide by the number of the ordinary shares for the predator. Remember the number of the ordinary shares should be the one for the predator. There were how many ordinary shares for A limited? There were 10 million. Ordinary shares. So divide by the 10 million ordinary shares so that you come up with what should be the earning per share of the predator when we apply, when we use the debentures. When we use the debentures. So that is now in relation to that question. Our next question will be April 2022. We check now the one for April 2022. April 2022. Question number five, part A. We check April 2022. There is a question number five, but F. April 2022. Question number five, but F. April 2022. Question number five, but F. 
So that question five, part A, the one for the last sitting, they gave you about sub limited, has decided to acquire trigger limited, has decided to acquire trigger limited. So that part B must not be there is a coordination. So the financial data for the two companies are given as follows. The financial data for the two companies are given as follows. So you are given net sales for A, sorry, for Somo and also Tiga. Profit after tax is the net income. They also gave you number of the issued shares, which are in millions. Also earning per share. They have also given you dividend per share. Total market capitalization. That is the total market value of equity. Total market capitalization will be the same as the total market value of equity. So that question did not give you the market price per share. So for us to get the market price per share, take that total market capitalization which is the total market value for equity, then divide by the number of the ordinary share. That's how you'll come up with the market price per share. So now required, when you go to required from monitor one, pre-acquisition market price per share for the combined company. That is the same as the way we have explained, we take that total market capitalization divide by the number of the ordinary shares to get the market price, but they are one each combined. We shall be able to see how it work for that. Roma letter two was the acquisition earning per share if quicker limited shareholders are offered a share of 13 on a share for share exchange. Roma letter two, the price earning ratio of some limited to, drops to 12, 12 times after the acquisition determine the post acquisition market price per share. So the first thing we do from monitor one, first we get the market price per share. From monitor one, they would like you to calculate the market price per share. So to compute the market price per share, to compute market price per share, Market price per share should be equal to total market value of equity, total market value of equity, total market value of equity, which they are referring to us. They are referring to us the total market capitalization. When you check through, that is the same as total market capitalization or simply or total market capitalization. Total market capitalization. Then after that, we divide by the number of the ordinary shares. Divide by the number of the ordinary shares. So we compute for each company before we combine them. So we start the one for some limited. So for this one, total market capitalization was given as 420 million in shares. 420 million. Then number of the ordinary shares issued are also in millions. So somewhere it was 7 point, 7.5 million. Yeah, so when you divide, it should be able to give us which here. Sorry. It's 56 shillings per share. I might just have the small points. Then we also compute the one for Tudor Limited. We also calculate the one for Tudor Limited. So for Tudor, you take. 45 millions is 45 millions. We divide by us 1.5 millions. So that should be able to give us which total. So to give us that. So they want the combined. 
The combined will be the weighted average. The combined will be weighted average. So to get the combined market price per share, so it is the same as the weighted average. It's the same as the weighted average. So for the weighted average, we use this total. There is 420 plus 45. You see the 420 plus 45. Give us a total of. Yeah, so for Songo, you take 420 million. Divide by the total, which I've said is 400 or 465. That's now the proportion of Songo in the combined. When we combine 420 plus 45. Then, now, after that proportion, multiply by 56. Multiply by 56. Then we add trigger mutant 45 as the it is proportion. Also divide by 465. Then we multiply by 30. That. So that's now how you combine them together to get the combined market price per share before the acquisition to get the combined market price per share before the acquisition. Get the combined market price per share before the acquisition. So it should be able to give you which figure. Sorry. 53.48. So that should be now the combined price, which is meant to be our Roma letter one. So we need to go to the Roma letter two. Now, prayers in answer Sangapi. So, so we can have a short break. We can have a short break for the press before we proceed. <coughs>
So let us now go to the Roman letter two. We go to the Roman letter two. So Roman letter two is meant to be, Roman letter two was meant to be the earning per share if they use the share for share exchange. So Roman letter two is share for share exchange. Share. Or share exchange. Share or share exchange. So when it is share or share exchange, first we compute the exchange ratio 
you shall first come up with the exchange ratio, which is supposed to be given by their offer price. Their offer price divided by market price per share of the aggregator. Their offer price divided by the market price per share of the aggregator. So offer price in the Roman letter two has been given as 30 shillings. The offer price in the Roman letter two, they were able to give us 30 shillings. So we divide by market price per share of the aggregator. We have calculated in Roman letter one. We got 50 watts. So divide by 56. Let's see what you come up with. So it should be zero point one. It has so many decimal points. Yeah. So if it has so many decimal points, remember what you are to do. After getting that, press A B C. On a push up by the part of your figure for calculator. Now press this side on your calculator. Fifteen is two. So fifteen is twenty-eight. Fifteen is twenty-eight. Once you have calculated three over fifty-six, put there the equal sign as an answer. Then after that, press this sign. It will give you those digits, so that you don't have to use those many decimal points. Isn't it? Yeah. So that's now the exchange ratio. That should be the exchange ratio. So our exchange ratio is the predator will give 15 shares in order to acquire 28 shares of the target. So that is now the easiest way on how to go about. So now from that point, the number of the shares to be issued. Now to get number of the shares to be issued, number of the shares to be issued. Number of the shares to be issued. It will now be 15 shares are equivalent to 28 shares. But you know the target has got how many shares? The target is trigger limited. So trigger limited has how many number of the shares? 1.5 million shares. So when you cross multiply, how many shares should be issued? When we cross multiply, how many shares should be issued? When you cross multiply, how many shares should be issued? The combined earnings. The 
combines to unease then number of the shares of the predator was it the share for share exchange the number of the shares of the predator then we add new shares to the patient to add Add the new shares to be issued. So combined earnings, we know we already have it. Combined earnings. So for the combined earnings, is the profit after tax. Profit after tax, there is 28 million. 130. We write them in full. Then the one for trigger, it is how much? 3 million 750. Then the number of the ordinary shares for some it was 7.5 million. And now you add. Eight, three, five, so combined and you simply add the profit after tax. So profit after tax, they gave you in the millions, shillings in the millions. So we write them in full that product. So it should be giving us which part? 3.84. Yeah. So we get 3.84. So that should be our raw monitor. So after that, we got the raw monitor. Are we, going, are we getting 3.84? Yeah. yeah. So let us now go to the raw monitor three. Raw monitor three is that if the price earning ratio for of some drops to 12 times after the acquisition, determine the firm's post acquisition market price per share. So the concept there is the price earning ratio. The concept is the price earning ratio. Concept for that item is the price earning ratio. So, price earning ratio it is supposed to be given by market price per share divided by the earnings per share. Price earning ratio should be given by market price per share divided by the earning per share. So we make market price per share to be the subject. We make market price per share to be the subject. So it will simply be the price earning ratio multiplied by the earning per share. So the question wanted the market price per share of the predator after the acquisition. So to compute now this acquisition market price per share of the predator. So it will be given by the price earning ratio. The price earning ratio. But you also multiply by Earning per share of the predator. 
Give us which part? Yeah. So I also want us to check the question for December 2021. Also check the one for December 2021. December 2021. Question number two, but B. We also, the one for the exam, there are two December 2021, pilot paper and the exam. So we do the one for the exam. December 2021, question number two, part B. December 2021, question number two, part B. Check December 2021, question number two, part B. December 2021, question number two, part B. So when you go through that question two, part B, they have stated that Kubra Limited is considering acquiring Dogo Limited. Kubra Limited is considering acquiring Dogo Limited. The selected financial data for the two companies is as follows. The selected data for the two companies is as follows. So they gave you annual sales, shillings in millions. They gave you net income, which are also in shillings and also in millions. Number of the ordinary shares, which are in millions. Earning per share is given. Market price per share is given. So both companies are in the 30% tax brackets. Both companies are in the 30% tax brackets. So required from Maleta 1, Kubwa Limited post acquisition earning per share. Assuming the two companies settle or not, an offer price of 20 shillings on the share for share exchange. So from Maleta 1 is share for share exchange. Roma letter two, Kubwa Limited post acquisition earning per share. Assuming Dogo Limited shareholders accept one 10% debenture bar value of a thousand for every 50 ordinary shares held. Then finally, Roma letter three, the level of the combined earnings, that is the profit before interest and tax, that Kubwa Limited will be in difference between financing option, between the financing options in part B, Roma letter one, and part B, Roma letter two. So they are simply asking you to calculate earnings before interest and tax at the point of indifference. At the point of indifference, the earnings before interest and tax for the two options should be the same. So we need to come up with that. But let us first go to the Roma letter one. So Roma letter one, it is share for share exchange. Roma letter one, it is share for share exchange. Roma letter one, it is simply share for share exchange. So Roma letter one, it is meant to be share for share exchange. Share for share exchange. Share for share exchange. So when it comes to the share for share exchange first, we also calculate the exchange ratio. We come up with the exchange ratio 
which is supposed to be the offer price divided by market price per share of the product. Divided by market price per share of the product. So that offer price was given in the Roma letter one. They offered a price of how much? They offered a price of 20. But when you check under Kukwa Limited, you can see under Kukwa Limited, the market price per share is given us. But so we come up with that exchange ratio. So if it has decimal points, I've shown you how to convert them into shares. If it has decimal, so 20 divided by 30, you get the answer. So if it has some decimal points, press N U C to convert them into shares. Two is to three. Yeah, so the exchange ratio is meant to be two to three. So from there you get the new shares to be issued. New shares to be issued. So new shares to be issued, two shares are equivalent to three shares. So two shares of the predator are equivalent to two, three shares of the target. Three shares of the target. So the target is global limited. So how many shares does global limited have? Number of the ordinary shares of Ndoko, it is 2.5 million. We have been given 2.5 million shares. So, how many shares will be issued when you cross multiply? So we need to get the number of the shares to be issued. Then we this one million and so we get them in that order. So now after that we can calculate. Earning per share of the predator. So remember, it is simply the combined earnings. It is simply the combined earnings. You get the combined earnings. You divide by the number of the ordinary shares of the predator. Number of Shares of the predator. <laughs> then you add new shares to be issued. Shares to be issued. So combined earnings, you add the net income. Combined earnings. We add the net income. So there is 40 million blah blah. So you take 40 million, you add 5 million. Number of the shares of the predator are how many? The number of the shares for Uber. There are 10 million ordinary. Shares. Then remember to add one million six sixty six. Sorry, three point eight six. So that should be the Roman letter one. 
parcel being the Roman letter one. We now go to the Roman letter two. Roman letter two is use of the pretentious. Roman letter two is meant to be use of the pretentious. <clears throat> So Roman letter two is meant to be use of the adventure. Roman letter two is basically use of the adventure. So when we are using the ventures, you recall how to compute the earning per share of the data. Remember, it was simply the combined earnings to get the combined earnings. You subtract the debenture interest with minus the debenture interest. Then we add the interest tax benefit. Add the interest tax benefit. Then you divide by the number of the ordinary shares of the creditor. The number of the ordinary shares of the creditor. So we need to get the number of the debentures to be issued. So we need to come up with the number of debentures to be issued. Number of the debentures to be issued. Number of the debentures to be issued. So they had said that in that Roman letter too. So one debenture is equivalent to 50 ordinary shares. They accept one ten percent debenture. So one debenture, one debenture is equivalent to fifty ordinary shares. Fifty ordinary shares. So the target is Dogo. Dogo has two point five million ordinary shares. Dogo has two point five. So how many debentures were issued? The cross multiply to come up with the number of the debentures. Fifteen thousand. Fifty thousand debentures. So after that, now you calculate the interest. So to get interest, take the 50,000 debentures. Bar value per debenture was given as what? It was 1,000. And the interest rate is given as what percent? 10%. Will be five minutes. So once you get that, we go back and get the earning per share of the data. So once we have done that, we can now come back up here. <clears throat> so combined earnings, we know the values. We simply add 40 million plus 5 million. So it is 40 million. Plus the five millions. You subtract interest. I've said it's five millions. 
Then interest tax benefit, it is 5 million multiplied by the corporate tax, which is 30%. Number of the ordinary shares of the predator, there were 10 million ordinary shares. So divide by 10 million ordinary shares. So that we shall be able to come up with. So you are getting which we are 4.15. So we go to Roman letter three. The level of the combined operating profit that Cuba Limited will be in difference between the financing option one and the option two. So that is the same as at the point of indifference. <clears throat> So at the point of indifference, at the point of indifference, earning per share for option one will be the same as the earning per share for option two. So at the point of indifference, it means that earning per share for option one will be the same as earning per share for option two. Also, at the point of indifference, earnings before interest and tax for option one will be the same as earnings before interest and tax for option two. That's now the implication of the point of indifference. So at the point of indifference, earning per share for the two options will be the same. Also, earnings before interest and tax for the two options will also be the same. So we shall be computing the two items for both to show that point of indifference. So we start by analyzing option one. We start off by analyzing option one. We start off by analyzing option one. So option one, it was share for share exchange, which means that it is all equity finance. All equity finance. All equity finance. Um, so when it is all equity finance, to compute earning per share for option one will be given by earnings before interest and tax one minus the tax rate. We divide by the number of the ordinary shares. So when it is all equity financed firm to come up with earning per share for option one, it will simply be earnings before interest and tax one minus the tax rate. We divide by the number of the ordinary shares. So earning before interest and tax, we don't know it. It is one of the items we are looking for. So it will simply be earnings before interest and tax. The tax rate was 30%. Was it 30%? That would be 0 0.3. Then I want you to check under option one. You can see our option one. In Roman letter one, it's our option one. Our Roman letter one is meant to be. So check the denominator. Check the denominator of our Roman letter one. How many shares were they in total? When you add them together, the number of the shares of the predator plus the shares will be issued. Sorry. 11 millions, 
So those are the number of the ordinary shares under option one. So finally, it will simply be equal to 0 0.7, that one minus 0 0.3 is the same as 0 0.7. So 0 0.7 earnings before interest and tax. We divide by 11.66. So that is now the formula for option one. So we need to create the one for option two. So after the formula for option one, we also come up with the one for option. So let us analyze also option two. We should now also be careful to analyze option two. So option two, it is equity and the debt finance because they are giving the ventures to acquire ordinary shares. So we go to option two. We go to option two. So option two, it will be equity and debt financed firm. Equity and debt financed firm. So option two. It is equity and debt financed firm, whereby earning per share should be given by earnings before interest and tax. We subtract interest, then one minus the tax rate, we divide by number of the ordinary shares. So it will still be earnings before the interest and tax. Interest, I want you to go to option two. Remember Roman letter two of the question. How much do we get as interest? Let me check under Roman letter two. We got five. May everything you refer to what you calculated in Roman letter two. Five million, then one minus zero. We also check the denominator. There were how many number of the ordinary shares under that Roman letter? Two. There were 10. There were 10 minutes. So it will now be 1 minus 0 0.3 the same as 0 0.7. So it will be 0 0.7 earnings before interest and tax. I also want you to take the 5 million multiply 0 because you are simply opening the brackets. You are simply opening the brackets. So, yeah. So, is it myself? So, I got to have a Maybe you can put that one as at this point, but now you can do that. 
this. So I want you to cross multiply, make the earnings before interest at tax be the subject. Now cross multiply that portion so that we make earnings before interest at tax to be the subject. So when you cross multiply, it should be 0 0.7. So, earnings <clears throat> before it is thirty four point after eight nine years, we need to make a new formula. Matter to confirm that it is at the point of indifference. <laughs> when you round off, you may not get the stretch. You need to show the point of indifference. Earning by share for the two option must be the same at the point of indifference. So we are getting that four million nine ninety nine nine ninety four dollars. Uh, so we want to confirm now using these two formulas whether they will give you the same earning per share. Option. So the question only one is this is what was required for the question. But I think sometimes they ask you to calculate earning per share and earnings before interest and tax at the point of indifference. So for option one, earning per share for option one, it is 0 0.7. This is the formula for option one. So it is simply 0 0.7 earnings before interest and tax is 34, 99994. Then divide by the number of the ordinary shares are 11,6667. So that should give you earning per share for option one. You also confirm earning per share for option two. For option two, we use this formula, whereby it will be 0 0.7 multiplied by 34, 
10. You know, minus 3.5 meters. Then we divide by 10 meters. So confirm whether the two are giving you the same figure as the earning per share. So confirm whether the two they are giving us this one. It gets 2.1. Uh, so if it is 2.1, then it is correct. At the point of indifference, <coughs> earning per share for the two options will be the same. And also earnings before interest and tax for the two options must be the same. So, mergers and acquisition, they test every city. So, we do two more other questions, then we move out of it. Yeah, they test every, but nowadays it is now kind of max. It ranges between eight up to 12. But the questions are not that huge, small structured questions. So, maybe we can also check the one for September. We check the one for September 2021. We check the one for September 2021. September 2021, question number five, part C. We check the one for September. September 2021, question number five, part C. September 2021, question number five, part C. So question five, part C for September 2021. <clears throat> they have said that Duncan Kipchumba, the director of Water Limited, Meet Lewis Haminwa, the director of Toa Limited, during a conference in Kisumu City. So they had some discussion about the two companies. After flying back to Nairobi, Duncan Kipchumba proposed to his board of directors about the acquisition of Toa Limited. So during the presentation to the board, he stated that as a result of this takeover, we will diversify our operations and the earnings by share would rise by 13%, bringing greater benefits to the, our shareholders. So no bid has yet been made and the water limited currently owns what percent? 2% of Tower limited, a bid that will be based on the exchange of the share between the two companies, which will be one water limited share for every six. So it is share for share exchange. They have already given you exchange ratio. Exchange ratio is that one share of water will be exchanged against six shares of Doha Limited. So financial data for the two companies include the following. They have given it turnover is the same as the sales. Profit after tax, that is the gross profit, then profit attributable to the ordinary shareholder. That's now the profit after tax. So profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders is now the profit after tax. When you, you, when you calculate the combined income, the combined net, and so the combined earnings, you'll be using the profit attributable to the ordinary 
shareholders. They have also given you dividends payable, also issued, <clears throat> you can see the issued ordinary share capital. It is in shillings in millions. So it is in shillings and also in what? In millions. Then market price per share is given. Bar value per share is also given. So far, the question has not given you <coughs> the number of the ordinary shares. So to get the number of the ordinary shares, you simply take the issue the ordinary share capital, which is in shillings and in millions, divide by the bar value per share. That will give you the number of the ordinary shares for water and store, because they were not provided. So now required, they want you to calculate pre major price earning ratio for both companies. So price earning ratio is simply market price per share divided by the earning per share. So they have not been given, we shall be calculating them because the question only gave you the market price per share. There is no earning per share, we need to calculate that. Also the post major earning per share, that's now they combine. They have already given you the exchange ratio. <clears throat> so it is easier now to come up with that. Then, from Marida 3, they want you to explain whether you agree with Duncan that earnings would go up by 13%. We shall confirm that. Then, finally, from Marida 4, post acquisition price of a share of water, mm -hmm. assuming the bid is successful. So, if the question is just a repetition. When we do it, the concept is still one item. So, the first part is the raw letter one how to compute the price and ratio. <clears throat> so before we get the price and ratio, we are lacking the number of the ordinary shares. We need to come up with what is supposed to be the number of the ordinary shares. So to compute the number of the ordinary shares, we need to calculate the number of ordinary shares, we need to calculate the number of the ordinary shares. So you start with water limited. You start off with water limited. So for water limited, you can see the issued ordinary share capital issues in the millions. It is how much? So you take the 20 millions, divide by the bar value per share. Bar value per share for water it is given as 0 0.5. So when you divide, you will get the number of the ordinary shares for water. There are 40 millions. Then you also commute for Tower Limited. <coughs> we also calculate for Tower Limited. So Tower Limited, it is 15 millions. We also divide by what? 0 0.1. So that should give us which here. 150 millions. And then apart from that, we also need the earning per share. We also calculate earning per share for each company. To get the earning per share for each company, it is earnings available. It is earnings available. Earnings available. You divide by number of the ordinary shares. So to get the earning per share, you simply take. So earnings available is what I referred to as profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders. So we start with the water limited. We start with the water limited. So earnings attributable to water limited is 7.1. So you take 7.8 million, divide by 40 million ordinary shares. You have just calculated the number there. Zero points. One five. One nine five. One nine five. So we also calculate the one for TOA Limited. So for TOA Limited, you see the attributable profit? 
which is 6.5. So 6.5 megahertz. We also divide by 100 and 150 megahertz. So that we come up with what should be the earnings per share. So here in a good example, zero point zero four. Zero point zero four. There is no eight. Yeah. yeah, so you can just have it as three decimal places. So that yeah. So now from there we are answering the raw matter one. We measure price earning. Those who are just the workings. So now to get the pre-major price earning. <laughs> so price and ratio it is supposed to be given by the price and ratio it is simply market price per share divided by earning per share the price earning ratio so we calculate for both companies pre merger is before the merger. So we start with water limited. We start with water. So market price per share for water limited. Three point rush. Three point. So earning per share was zero point. Sorry. Zero point one nine five. So we have just calculated this yes. And also the one for Toa Limited. So for Toa Limited, 0 0.45 divided by what? So 0 0.43. 0 0.043. Yeah, so that is now your price and ratio. That now should give you the price and ratio. So that is from a little one, we matter. So we go to Roman letter two. Roman letter two is post merger earning per share. So post merger earning per share, but it is share for share exchange. It is share for share exchange. They have already given you the exchange ratio. So, Roman letter two, it is share for share exchange. Share for share exchange. So, we simply start by looking for the number of shares to be issued. Number of shares to be issued. So to get the number of the shares to be issued in the, in the paragraph before the financial data, you can see the exchange ratio. One share is equivalent to six shares. So the target is to so we calculated there were how many million ordinary shares? There were 150 million ordinary shares. So how many shares should be issued? Cross multiply, we get the number of the new shares to be issued. Sorry? 25 million. 25 million. Yes. So now we are calculating application earning per share of the regulator. So remember the formula when it is share for share exchange, it is combined earnings divided by the number of the shares of the predator plus the new shares to be issued. So combined earnings are those profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders. So you take 
7.8 minutes. Your add 6.5 minutes. So that is now our combined earnings. You simply add <clears throat> the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders. Then number of the ordinary shares of the predator. How many shares were there for water? We calculated. Sorry? There are 40 meters. Now we are issuing how many shares? 25 meters. <clears throat> So that should be able to give us the post acquisition earning per share of the predator. Post acquisition earning per share of the predator. Sorry? So we get 0 0.22. 0 0.22. So they also, we can also calculate for the target. They only specify, they did not specify for both, but they just said post merger earning per share in this one. So we can also calculate the one for the target. This one is for the predator. So we can also calculate the one for the target. Just in case. So for the target, you simply take the exchange ratio. You take the exchange ratio multiplied by the one for the predator. You simply take the exchange ratio multiplied by the one for the predator. So exchange ratio is one divided by six. It is one to six. Exchange ratio is one to six. Then multiplied by 0 0.22, the one that we have just calculated. <clears throat> so anything for the target, you simply take the exchange ratio multiplied by the one for the predator. Simply check the exchange ratio we divide by the one for the predator. So after that, we now go to the raw monitor three, where they were asking you to explain. Explain whether you agree with Duncan Kitumba. So Kitumba had said in the second in the paragraph number two. You can see the paragraph number two. He said that earnings would rise by what percent? 13 percent. You want to confirm that whether it is going up by 13 percent. So to confirm that, we take this one. This is after the matter. We also calculated before the matter in the Roman letter one and see whether it has gone up by 13 percent. So let us calculate the increase in the earnings per share of the predator because they are saying that Kitumba had proposed that that's the paragraph number two. During his presentation, he stated that as a result of this takeover, we will diversify our operations and earning per share will rise by what percent? So we want to know whether it has gone up by 13%. We want to know whether that earning per share has gone up by 13%. So let us get the percentage change in the earning per share. We want to get the percentage change in the earning per share for the predator. We want to get the percentage change. Percentage change. Percentage change. In the earning per share. So, in the Roman letter two, what was the earning per share for the predator? It was zero point one nine five. The Roman letter two. Yeah, so this is now after the merger. Before the merger in the Roman letter one, we did some work. For what are you doing? Zero point one five. Zero point one nine five. Yeah, so we are taking earning per share of water after the merger. 
minus earning per share of what before the merger. Also divide again by before the merger and see that figure has gone up by what percent? 12.82. 12.82. Yes. Uh, so roughly, maybe we can give him a benefit of doubt, a starting percent. So roughly, we can give a benefit of doubt. That is a small margin, which <coughs> round off will be that. So we agree with him. So the explanation in the Roman letter three is that we agree with his comment we agree with his comment since earning per share has increased by 13 percent we agree with the comment because earning per share has increased by 13 percent we agree with his comment because earning per share has gone up by 13 percent so finally roman data four finally the Roman letter four. So Roman letter four is simply post acquisition price of share of water limited, assuming the bid is what? Yeah. So the concept is still the price earning ratio. It is still the price of earning ratio. You remember it was market price per share divided by earning per share. So when you make market price per share to be the subject, market price per share to be the subject will be the price earning ratio multiplied by earning per share limit. So this one should be post acquisition. Market price per share should be equal to <clears throat> the price earning ratio multiplied by post acquisition earning per share. So, most of the time, the price earning ratio remains constant. Most of the time. So we simply compute it from this point. We simply calculate it from that point. So before the merger, we are on water limited. What was the market price per share for water limited? Under water limited, market price per share is given. It is 3.2. Then remember earning per share of water before the merger. 0 0.195. Yeah, so it is 0 0.195. So I just use it directly at that point. 3.2 divided by 0 0.195. So this post acquisition earning per share is 0.22. You remember? Yeah. So this post acquisition earning per share is 0. Point so multiplied by 0 0.22. So that now should be equal to the post acquisition market price per share. It should be able to be zero. So we get 3.61. Yeah, so that's now for that. So when we meet in our next class, which is tomorrow, I will do more one more question. Then we go to the restructuring and the reorganization. So we can stop there for now.